Welcome back to Craig's Custom Cooking. Today I'm gonna make pickled eggs. That's what we always called them as I was growing them up. You may know them as red beet eggs. There's many names for them. All they are is you take red beets, you cook them, you pickle them, you put your eggs in them, let them sit in the refrigerator for a day or two, the eggs take on the color of the red beets, and then you eat them. So let me show you the process. All right. So here I have nine red beets that I got at the grocery store. They're all about the same size. They're about the size, I don't know, between a golf ball and a, a softball, or a tennis, or a baseball, not a softball. So what we do is you just take them and you cut off the tops. You want to leave some some of the top still on the red beet and then you just put them in the water these have already been washed there again we leave the tops on some of the tops on and you'll see later on how that helps so i'm going to do the rest of these but with these greens we're going to use these we're not going to throw these out we're going to cook these they're very nutritious they're very good to use. We'll sort through them, pick out all the good ones. The bad ones we'll dispose of out in, our, in a compost pile. And let me do this, and I'll bring you back and show you the rest of it. All right. I have my nine red beets in the water. We're going to turn this on high. We're going to bring this to a boil. And we're going to cook this until they're tender. Now, to everybody, that could be different. I like my red beets. I don't want them to just melt in my mouth, but I don't want them to be crunchy either. So it's a happy medium. So I cook them until they're about a, well, a half done potato, like you'd make potato salad out of. That's how I make these. So it's going to take... I've seen it take 45 minutes. I've seen it take three hours. It just depends on the size of the red beet. There's a lot of variables. You just need to make them so you, when you stick a knife or a fork in them, it comes out pretty clean. In this pan, I have 18 extra large eggs. Now, there's a lot of controversy on how you make an egg so it peels. These are fresh eggs. I just bought them today. They're, they're very fresh. There's a lot of ways that they tell you to do this, do that. It's going to make the eggs peel perfectly every time. That That's not true. I've had 10 eggs peel good and the rest of them peel bad. It, I, I do what I do because that's the way I was taught to do it. But I take salt. And I add about two tablespoons of salt. I take apple cider vinegar. And I add about a cup. And I'm going to turn these on. I'm going to bring them to a boil. Once they come to a boil, I'm going to shut off the temperature. Or the stove. I'm going to put a lid on them. I'm going to push them back to the back of the stove. I'm going to let it set for 20 to 25 minutes. Then I'm going to transfer them to an ice bath. They're going to set in the ice bath for 15 to 20 minutes. And then I'm going to peel them. Now, are they all going to peel perfectly? I don't know. You don't know. It, it's, it's a gamble. But we'll see. The ones that don't peel perfect, we'll use for egg salad. If you don't mind a disformed egg in your your red beets, then by all means add it. So let me get these going. Let me get them to where they need to be, and then I'll bring you back. All right, it's been 20 minutes. I've been sitting here in the hot water. I'm gonna uncover my eggs. I'm gonna take my spider. I'm gonna take the eggs out. cold water.
try to get them all submerged. I'm going to take ice. I'm going to put ice on top. We're just going to let these set for another 15 or 20 minutes until they cool down. And I'll bring you back. Alright, I have my eggs in the sink. I've already peeled three. One did not come out so well. The bottom came off. The other two right now are in good shape. So I'm going to peel some more. See how they come out. I just crack them on the edge of my sink. Make sure the shells crack really well. I use running water to help get under the shells I'm peeling them. Good egg. Do one more. There's a little skin under the shell. If you can get under that little skin, the eggs will peel really easy. And as you can see, the vinegar, it helps soften the shell. It's taken off some of the parts of the shell on the outside. I just keep getting under the shell with my thumb, work my way around the egg, and there's another good one. Let me peel the rest, I'll tell you how many came out good, and how many didn't. Alright, we're back. My red beets are done, they cooked exactly one hour. So these are ready, I'm going to take them out and show you what to do. Out of the 18 eggs, only two of them did not peel very good. I lost a little chunk off the ends. I'm still going to put them in. But the other 16 came out perfect. So that's a good way to do fresh eggs. I can't guarantee you they're going to come out perfect every time. I'm not going to make that guarantee because the first time you do it, if they don't peel right, you're going to say, well, he didn't know what he was talking about. But this is the best way that I found to peel fresh eggs. So let me set those aside. Let me bring over my strainer with a bowl underneath. Take my spider. Take out my red beets. We do not throw out this red beet juice. Some of it I'll use to make the pickled eggs, and I'll show you that. The rest of it I let cool down. My wife strains it, and she drinks it. She she loves the beet juice. This is it's it's very healthy. It's got a lot of good nutrients in it. So I will not throw this away. So I'm just going to set that to the back, let it cool down. I'm going to transfer these to the sink. Gonna run some cold water over them to cool them down a little bit, and I'm gonna show you how to skin them. All right, here's my red beets in the sink. I'm gonna do this hopefully so you can see it. But you take the top where the where the leaves were, and you just push it with your thumb. It comes right off, and the rest of the skin will come off very easily. You just take the root end off. That is a skinned red beet. Let me do another one or two. There's another one. Take the root off. Take the top off. Just use your thumb. And the skin will push off the whole way around the red beet. Very simple. You can go through a lot of red beets really quick this way. I've seen people roast them in the oven. You can do that. 
I just found that this is the easiest way. And this is the way my mother did it. So I do it the same way she taught me. So I'll finish these up. And I'll bring you back. Alright, now I'm going to cut up these red beets. I'm going to quarter them. And I'm going to do it the way my mother showed me. You can do it on a cutting board if you prefer. But I'm just going to take and get down through. Spin it. Down through very gently. And it cuts them into quarters. You don't want to push down through hard. You don't want to cut into your hand. But if you're careful, it's not a problem. Alright, so I have them cut up. I'm going to get ready and make the pickling broth that goes on in the jar with everything. The only problem with cutting them in your hand is that the red beets will stain your hand red. But it'll, it'll wear off. I've washed them. It, it's going to have to wear off. So, if you don't want your hands to be a little bit red, wear a pair of gloves. So let me bring you back and show you the last step before we jar these up. Alright. I'm going to get ready and make the pickling substance that goes on the red beets and the eggs that go in the jar. This is my mother's cookbook. It's very, very old. It's a canning cookbook. I come from a farm community in Pennsylvania, and we canned a lot of stuff. So it's the same recipe to can red beets. You can use this recipe to can your red beets, put them in a quart jar, seal them in a hot water bath, Put them on a shelf in your house, then when you want to make pickled eggs, you just take a quart or two of red beets and put into the jar with the eggs. Or you can do it this way. So the first thing we're going to do is I have two cups of the liquid that the red beets were boiled in. That's going to help give you your color. So you definitely want to reserve that. Then we're going to add one quart of apple cider vinegar. We put that in there. We're going to add two and a half cups of just white sugar. Alright, twelve cloves. So we're going to put those in there. We're going to add, it calls for one three inch stick of cinnamon. I'm going to add three because these two are small. I'm just going to throw three of them in there and that's it. So we turn on our heat, we bring this to a boil. Once the sugar melts and it's boiled, and I'll show you how to assemble everything in the jar, and we'll be done. All right, it just got done boiling. I'm going to take it off, move it to the back of the stove, and let it cool down. So here's our eggs. Here's our red beets. We have our pickling juice back here. This is a gallon jar. It has a plastic lid. So what we're going to do is put some of our red beets in the bottom. And put our eggs in. The eggs are going to get red because of my hands, but they're going to get red eventually anyway, so it doesn't matter. them off with the rest of the red beets. Let me wash my hands and I'll bring you back. All right, so this is my pickling juice. I could try to pour it in 
out of the pan. But the way my luck's been today, I'd have it all over the stove. So this is how I'm going to do it. I got my cinnamon sticks. Pretty confident that I can finish this up with the pan. Well, there's one cinnamon stick on the floor, so we'll just let that one go. So now I take a paper towel, wipe off the top of my jar. You can see that that was just enough liquid to fill this gallon jar. Put our lid on it. This is ready. To go in the refrigerator for 24 hours and as you can see if you if you wipe that beet juice and everything up right away it does not stain but we're going to put this in the refrigerator for 24 hours and then they'll be ready to eat